welcome back in this lecture we will provide some features of multipole radiation and how they are connected to selection rules in gamma transitions we will not be able to provide a detailed mathematical derivation or uh, a fairly visual picture which is possible but uh, this those aspects are beyond the course the scope of this course but some useful relationship will be provided which gives you an indicator on what kind of uh, gamma transitions are possible so let's get started so there are two ways to classify gamma transition that is because of the fundamental reason for gamma transition. Whenever there is a change in charge distribution, uh, the energy that is released will be via, via electric gamma transition. So there can be a change in current distribution. Uh, this would give rise to magnetic gamma transitions. These can be differentiated experimentally. Uh, the fundamental origin is also different. So we always say there are only multipole radiation because there is no monopole radiation. There is a reason for this. Um, uh, the fundamental basis for, uh, or, or the fundamental outcome of a gamma transition um, is, let's say gamma decay, is an emission of gamma rays and each of these gamma ray particle has an integer number of angular momentum. So this is the angular momentum quantum number. So whenever a gamma uh, particle is released, it has an integer number of angular momentum, which is taken out with the gamma particle emission. So this L quantum number can take different integer values. L equal to one will be referred to as dipole. Um, we will see why it is dipole and, uh, and so on. L equal to two will be quadrupole and L equal to three will be octopole. That is because L goes into this part, two to the power of uh, there's no monopole, right? You don't start with L equal to zero. You start with only L equal to one. So two to the one is like a dipole. Two to the two is like a four, which is like a quadrupole. Two to the three is eight, is an octopole. So you have heard uh, these charge arrangement in your classical electrostatics course. Uh, how a dipole is arranged and quadrupole is arranged, octopole is arranged. To an extent, the there is a certain relationship between charge arrangement in classical electrostatics when you say a dipole and uh, the arrangement of, or the symmetry of uh, the multipole radiation. The so symmetry here in, let's say, if you have a classical dipole, uh, charge or a quadrupole arrangement of charge or octopole arrangement of charge, there's a certain symmetry associated with that charge distribution. A corresponding symmetry uh, is also present in these radiations. So the dipole uh, radiation has the same symmetry as dipolar distribution of charges. Uh, quadrupole radiation has the same symmetry as the quadrupole distribution of charges and so on. That's where these names come about. So there is a notation involved. When we say E1 radiation, the first, uh, this letter refers to electric and L is equal to one. So that would make it an electric dipole radiation. So when we refer to a radiation as M3, this letter refers to magnetic uh, radiation. Uh, 3 refers to L equal to 3, which would be a uh, octopole. So it will be a magnetic octopole uh, radiation. 
I suppose it would have been um, good to support all these things with visual picture. Uh, I, I couldn't find appropriate animation or picture uh, within the scope of uh, this class. Uh, so perhaps when I find one, uh, I will try to add it uh, later as in a follow-up uh, lecture. So for now, we have just introduced certain jargons and we will introduce a few more things. Uh, um, so first, there is a way to figure out the parity of electric and magnetic radiation. In some previous lectures, we have introduced the meaning of parity. This is a fundamental symmetry of uh, nature. So given an electric multipole radiation, so this is uh, specifies the multipole nature of radiation, like dipole, quadrupole, octopole, depending upon the value of L. So the parity of an electric multipole radiation is given by minus one to the power of L. So all these things fundamentally relate to the mathematical functions that are utilized for representing this multipole radiation. Uh, people who have taken, let's say, some quantum chemistry class or quantum mechanics class are probably used to this parity, uh, the meaning of parity and the quantum numbers associated with parity. But even in a classical electrodynamics class, especially if you take an advanced class, uh, a similar kind of physics exist and similar kind of mathematical uh, functions are utilized. And these mathematical functions are used for figuring out the parity of uh, the system. The magnetic multipole radiation uh, have this parity. So there is a small difference. Here L comes here L plus one. Okay. So this is going to be important. So when a nucleus changes from an initial nucleus spin state of I sub I, I subscript I, to a final nuclear spin state given by I sub F, then the angular momentum that comes out from this transition can take many integer values given by this relationship. We'll elaborate this using an example. So the L, which we re referred to in the previous slides, uh, can take up these values. For example, if the initial nuclear spin state is two plus, here, this refers to the nuclear spin plus refers to the parity of that state. The final IF is three plus. This refers to the nuclear spin of the final state plus refers to the parity. Implementing this formula, L can take up the values from this to this, right? That will be two plus three, five. So that is the maximum L allowed here. And this amounts to three minus two, one. So L can take up the value of one, two, three, four, five. So there is a reason for all these things. I mean, uh, in some earlier lecture, we had talked about vector coupling of angular momentum. So that is the basis for this. Uh, all these things should be uh, viewed as some change in angular momentum which shows up in the radiation, okay? in the nature of the radiation that is coming out because of change in angular momentum of the nuclear spin gives rise to a uh, certain multipole radiation. So from the information which we provided uh, based on parity of the electric multipole radiation and the parity of uh, magnetic multipole radiation, so there is no change in parity when in this transition, uh, I, this is plus, the final state is also plus. So putting the information presented in the previous slide uh, along with this, the allowed multipole radiations would be M1, E2, M3, E4, and M2. 
fine, right? Because you don't want to have a change in parity. All right. Only these are allowed theoretically. What is experimentally observed is the radiation are dominated by M1 radiation and E2 radiation. Um, so summarizing, putting all these things together, uh, the parity associated with electric dipole radiation is this, and magnetic dipole radiation is this, is given by this. So whenever there is no change in parity, uh, when the nuclear spin states uh, change or when the nuclear uh, transition occurs, uh, then only um, even electric multipolarity is allowed. When there is no change in parity, only odd magnetic multipolarity is allowed. Whenever there is a change in polarity, only odd electric multipolarity is allowed because if it is odd, uh, this would be negative one, right? So uh, for in this case, when this is even, uh, there would be no change in uh, parity. That means uh, the parity quantum number is plus one. So that is possible only for even numbers. So when there is change in parity, uh, then only even magnetic uh, multipolarity is allowed, right? When this is even, then L plus 1 is odd, then there will be a change in uh, parity. Uh, so this summarizes uh, the allowed uh, multipole radiation uh, depending on the parity of the initial and final nuclear states. So all these things can be put together in the form of a table and provides you uh, some rules. These are the selection rules uh, and multipolarities allowed in gamma DK. So delta I refers to change in spin. Delta pi refers to change in parity. So if delta I is zero and when there is no parity change, the allowed multipole radiations are of this nature, M1 type and E2 type and so on. All these things are listed in this table. Uh, we can also ask some further questions just to check our own understanding. We can ask whether I, initial I, if it is zero, and final I, if it is zero, is this, uh, is such a transition possible? This is not possible uh, because uh, the photon loss at least has one unit of angular momentum, right? So if you implement the formula, there is no way to get uh, L equal to one. So even though this is allowed based on this criteria, uh, if you have only the initial state has a nuclear spin of zero and final state has a nuclear spin of zero, you still, that is not allowed because uh, it uh, you cannot generate a photon because the photon has to have a minimum uh, quantum number, well, angular momentum. In the next brief lecture, we will see how the selection rules are applied to some uh, gamma decay. Thank you.